In this video, I'm jumping into one of my old videos and answering some of your unanswered questions. So let's get right into it. Hey, what's up? It's Chris from Rooker Films. And in today's video, we're jumping back into the typewriter effect in Adobe Premiere Pro video and answering some of the unanswered questions left in the comment section. Now, this video is about one year old and it's received over 100,000 views. Thank you ever so much to everybody that has watched this video. Thank you to everyone supporting the channel. I really do appreciate it, but I can't help but notice the same questions keep popping up in the comment section. So this video is to clear up any of the confusion and answer some of those unanswered questions. So the first unanswered question, how to add a second line of text. Now, if you want to add a second line of text to this effect, Unfortunately, you have to do the effect all over again. So, as you can see, we've got typewriter effect in Premiere Pro. If we wanted to do this all over again, we would want to create a second line of text. So we go into File, New, Legacy Title, press the T icon, add some text, second line of text. I'm gonna change the font to Avenir change the color to black, change the weight, and we'll press the center buttons to center this up. Now we'll drag title two on top of everything, and we'll just drag the position of this down so that is the second line. There we go. In fact, I'm gonna move this over to the left. There we go. So once this first line has completed its animation, we want to take the blinking cursor, that is this black video right here. We want to cut. And on the second part of this video, we want to change the position over to the left of the second line of text. Now, we'll go ahead and we'll create the animation of the second line of text. So we'll go into effects, linear wipe. We'll change the wipe angle to negative 90. We'll pull the transition completion all the way up to 100%. Create a brand new keyframe, and we'll go over maybe one second, and we'll pull this all the way down to zero. Now, you want to go ahead and create a brand new keyframe on the cursor blinking. So that'll be this layer here. New keyframe is created there, and you want to go ahead and scroll to the end of the animation. You want to pull this line over to the right, double check that, make sure that is in time. It's a little bit ahead, so you want to go ahead and update the position of this. Just update that position. There we go. And that is how you add a second line of text to the typewriter effect right inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, the next question is, how do I change the color of the text and how do I change the color of the background? Well, that's pretty easy. All you have to do, select everything on the sequence, right click, go up into nest, and that's gonna turn this into a nested sequence. We'll rename this to nested text effect. We'll go into effects and search for tint. Drop tint onto the nested text. And inside of tint, we've got map black to and map white to. So if you wanted to change the color of the background, you will map the white to a different color. So we'll select red, and that is how you change the background. To change the color of the text, you map the black to, let's say, blue. And there you go. We've just changed the color of the background and the text right inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. Nice and easy. The next question is how to save this as a preset. Unfortunately, you can't really save this as a preset. It's super annoying, I know but unfortunately you have to do this manually by hand every time you want to add in a line of text. You can copy the keyframes and you can copy the effects and paste them onto new text, but unfortunately you can't save this as a preset, sorry. Next question, how do I drop this on top of other video clips? That's pretty easy again. So we've got our nested sequence. I'm just gonna remove the tint effect. So we go back to the original black and white text. We're just gonna move this up onto video layer two. We'll go into our projects tab. We'll go into the finder and we want to find a video to drop underneath. So I'm just going to drop, what can I drop? 
I'm going to drop this. I'm going to drop this coat clip that I created from a video a short while ago. We'll drop this into Premiere Pro. We'll drag that clip onto video layer one. And if I hide the text effect, then you can see that video is hiding right there. But we'll turn that back on and we'll go ahead and select the text layer, go into opacity, blend mode, and we can change the blend mode to multiply. And there you go. The black text is appearing on top of the video. Of course, though, if you wanted to make this text white, then all you have to do is go into effects, drop tint on to the text effects, and then you change the black and the white around. So map black to white, map white to black. And of course, you can see we've got this really cool in text video effect happening. If you want to use that, feel free to use that. But if we want to change this so we can see the original video, then you want to change the blend mode from multiply to screen. And there you go. We can change the scale of this. We can change the position of this. Because it's in its own nested sequence at this point, everything will change at the same time. So there we go. That is the typewriter effect in Premiere Pro with the second line of text with the colors inverted onto a video. Now that brings me on to my next question and my final question that I haven't answered yet. And that is, how do I change the original text? Well, that's super easy. If we go back into the nested text effect, we'll find all of the original text. So if we want to go ahead and we want to change the second line of text, all we have to do is double click on title two. We can type whatever we like in here. So I'm just going to put ha 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 ha. Center this back up. As you can see, that has adjusted the words. It's changed the words, but the problem is the positioning does need to be tweaked. So we're going to move the positioning over to the right just to line that back up again. But unfortunately, the typewriter effect is now out of sync. So all we need to do is just update the position of the blinking cursor. So as that gets to the very end, you want to go ahead and you want to move the position of the keyframe. We'll delete all of these other keyframes here. We don't need any of these. We'll change the position of this all the way to the right. Go back to the first keyframe. That one was just here. We'll move this over to the left just a touch. And then like we did before, you just want to make sure that this is always to the right of the text. You don't want this to be on top of the text or to the left of the text. You want this to be always just a little bit to the right. And if we play this back, there you go. We've changed the words, we've changed the letters, we've changed the second line of text and adjusted everything so that it is now in sync again. Now there's one more thing that I need to mention and I know a few of you have asked me how to do this. Unfortunately, you can't do this. So if you copy, let's copy the typewriter effect in Premiere Pro line. We'll copy that and we'll copy the original cursor as well. We'll copy that in. Now, because I've copied that, a lot of people would think that if I change the second title one, it won't affect the first title one. But if I change title one on the pasted option, put some random characters in there, and then we go back. As you can see, the second title one is now saying all of this. And if we go back to the original, unfortunately, that is there as well. So this basically means that when you want to add another line or if you want to redo this effect, you can't just copy the original typewriter effect, paste it somewhere else and change the title. You have to create a brand new title and apply the animation to the new title. It's a little bit long winded, I know, but unfortunately that's the process that you have to follow in order to paste the effect into Premiere Pro. And there you go. I really hope that answers some of the unanswered questions from the typewriter effect. If you have any more questions that were unanswered in this video, then please do let me know in the comment section below and I will try my very best to help you out. And of course, thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you tomorrow for another brand new video. Thank you for watching.